are you, Ian? I'm good, Rich. What's happening? I don't understand how this a player, this man, could be hospitalized for five days and all the reports are like, oh, he, his, his career is not in jeopardy. I mean, this is not serious enough to put even this season in jeopardy. I mean, he's been hospitalized for uh, five days, Ian. What's going on? Right. Well, so a couple of things. Um, I, I am hearing that career-wise he's going to be fine. And as far as he's concerned and just, you know, talking to people who uh, are pretty close to this situation, week one is still very much a possibility for him. So, that, so then you would say, well, why is he in the hospital for five days? Well, when you, when you go through an incident like this and you, you know, have this incredible trauma to your hand, there's burns, there's discoloration, there, there's a lot going on there, mm -hmm. um, then there's, there are things that need to be fixed. And I think functionally, um, it's going to be fine. Uh, that's what it sounds like. But, you know, when, again, like, you you know, there's some parts where they're checking out some nerve issues, and I don't sense that that's going to be a huge, a huge deal. But, um, you know, when you have some stiffness, when you have some discoloration, which, you know, obviously the hand for – you know, for, for reasons that are, are not good, went through a lot. Yeah. Um, there's some procedures you have to do to either to fix it, either functionally or cosmetically. Wow. Well, Ian, so I'm sure it doesn't look the same either. Let me ask you this question. D did, did, did he have to have a digit reattached? I mean, is it that, is, is, is that why everybody's sort of maybe from his team playing it down and that's why he's been in the hospital for, for this long, Ian? Uh, I, I have not heard that. Um, I, what I have heard is that his hand is intact. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm sure it will look a little different. Um, I, you know, how could it not? Um, but I have not heard that he had, to had, that he had any fingers reattached, just he, that his hand was intact. Ian Rappaport joining me here now. So now, so now what, what's, what do the Giants know? Uh, and, and what do you know about the Giants getting in to see him? Sounds like the Giants know essentially what I, what I just mentioned. Um, and they have not, from my knowledge, they have not been able to see him. Uh, and, and I sort of understand, I think I do understand it, because he's not under contract. And, you know, let's, he's, he's not a free agent, but he's not under contract either. He's in a little bit of an odd situation. But, you know, if a player is not under contract, teams don't get to give them physicals, you know, unless it's the pre-draft process. And so from that sense, I understand. And I'm sure that if he's going through some, some different um, – procedures to make the hand look like it used to uh, or just make it better whatever way they're making it better um, i would assume you'd want to do that until you have the giants come and look at it so those are sort of the issues um so I, I i don't i know the trainer was down there yesterday i don't know if he's physically left or not but i would i would not be surprised if if it was much much later until the giants are actually able to see him ian rapaport joining me here on the rich eisen show so he's sort of in like that that nether region right now, <laughs> contractually. Um, yeah. And by by next week, though, he's either got to sign this contract with with whatever hand works, or or not. Right? Is, isn't that it? Oh, the the deadline next week is to sign a long term deal, and that's not happening now. Okay. Not from his end. Not the deal that was on the table, the sixty million dollar deal. So next week means not... nothing essentially at this point. Right. Okay. Next week is. That deadline is not really um, applicable to him. Okay. So the next thing you'll see from him is he will sign his, his franchise tag when he's ready to play. So what that does is it basically allows him to control how much money he's going to get. Whereas let's say he had signed his tag. Let's say he signed his tag immediately. Well, then the Giants would probably put him on the non-football injury list. And if he was on that for the regular season, would have to miss six games and then maybe six paychecks. Now, let's say he's ready for week two. Well, then he would only miss one paycheck of the, you know, uh, one paycheck off the $15 million salary. Hmm. And so, so he saves himself a lot of money. I mean, calls himself money doing this, but yes. saves himself money because he hadn't signed his tag yet. And so he can control his own situation. So the firecracker going off in his hand cost him the opportunity to sign a long-term deal that he wasn't going to really sign anyway, or the cost him the opportunity to have a negotiation between now and next Wednesday that, that could have given him that long-term contract. So it's cost him that. Exactly but right. the firecracker going off in his hand with him not having signed the franchise tender 
saves him some money because the Giants can't put him on a list that could cost him six game checks. Right. So he's going to wait to sign the tender until he knows exactly how many games he might be able to miss and thus save himself some money. Did I get all of that yeah. right, Ian? You you nailed it. That's exactly what it is. And plus, you know, there was, especially when this first happened, there was talk, you know, would he be ready for training camp? Well, you know, he's a franchise tag guy. And from from what I'm being told, I don't think he was going to show up on time to camp anyway. And, you know, of course, you talk to veteran players about this, and they say, why would he? You know, and nobody likes, you know, the veterans like training camp. So I would, I would assume that his plan was to show up a couple weeks in, get ready, and go for the season. So now we know that's going to happen. And he'll just, when he's ready, he'll sign and, and kind of go forward. Ian Rappaport joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So uh, what about the three guys for whom next Wednesday's deadline is still viably intact? Uh, do you think uh, Dez, Demarius, Justin Houston, any of them, any combination of three or none of them are going to sign a long-term deal before next Wednesday? From what it sounds like, Dez has the best chance of signing. And I don't know exactly what that deal is going to look like. I know the deals the Cowboys have had on the table in the past, which were low in, full in, low in fully guaranteed money and low in yearly average right off the bat. Um, and you know maybe they've improved those a little, but I think the principles are still the same. Where he's going to have to earn all his money, go year by year. Whereas, you know, let's say, I mean, Demarius Thomas is a comparable receiver on the field to Dez. He's going to get far more fully guaranteed money whenever he signs, just because you don't you don't have to worry about him at all. He's he's a great receiver and he's he's good off the field. Mm -hmm. But but the, the, from what I understand, the Cowboys are optimistic that they'll be able to sign. Yes. It's just, you know, they haven't really connected recently, but the deadline is still more than a week away. So um, I would expect things will ramp up Monday or Tuesday. Ian Rappaport joining me here on the program. When does Russell Wilson sign on the dotted line? Any time before this season, you think? If, yeah, I think it's possible. Um, I don't know. You know, it would be, it would be before training camp if he was going to get a deal. But, you know, it's an incredibly difficult negotiation. And the more I hear about it, the more I talk about it, the more difficult it seems. Why? Because, you know, there's, there's the issue that has been talked about plenty, which is, you know, the, the desire for fully guaranteed contracts. And it's still, it seems like it's still in his head. You know, teams don't really do that. Well, why? Well, because the contracts would have to be fully funded. Okay, well, why can't that happen? And the answer is, it just usually doesn't. But that's not a great explanation if you're someone who doesn't, you know, who sort of doesn't want to rely on past precedent. You know, I think Russell Wilson and his camp approach this with a very open mind. And, and the question of why can't his contract be fully guaranteed, I'm not going to say it's a stumbling block and it's not like that's the only way he signed, but there's still some questions um, of just. Why can't you fully guarantee a contract? He had no questions off the field. He's been won as much as you could possibly win being a young quarterback. Um, so, you know, as you get closer to the training camp, I would expect things to ramp up. But um, he has an agent who is used to dealing with fully guaranteed baseball contracts, and it's just a different perspective. Mm. Ian Rappaport joining him here on the show. Law, you got it. You, you uh, whispered in my ear something about another player with a firecracker. During <laughs> yeah, it just came out about 20 minutes ago. Bucks cornerback C.J. Wilson also suffered a severe hand injury due to a firework on the 4th of July. Uh, his agent or his representatives told uh, the Tampa Tribune. So no no uh, word on how long he may be oh, out, but gracious. a severe hand injury, which he was hospitalized for. Jeez. Uh, I don't even know. I don't even know how to respond to something like that. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm breaking news to you there too, Ian, but it's just, I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I had not seen that. I don't know what the league, uh, is this, a, I, I don't know, now that there's two players, I don't know, this raises to something that the league has to step in, but I mean, who, who needs to tell people don't don't mess with firecrackers, you know? I don't understand it. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know, it's upsetting, it's not safe at all, yeah. I, you know, I just, I don't even uh, know. I'm, I've, ne I've never been into it. Uh, so I have no frame of reference for why it's, I mean, I guess it's fun seeing a fireworks display, I guess, but, um, I've had no desire to play at all with fireworks. Yeah, no. Very scary to me. <laughs> um, look at you, Ian Rappaport. Hey, look, I said the same thing, uh, uh a couple of days too, but you know, the, the, here, here's the deal. I mean, uh, w at least 
with, with the with the. Well, let's just hope that everybody can, you know has has a hand still intact. That's number one. Yeah. And with Jason Pierre-Paul, with each passing day, the fact that we're not hearing anything and he's still in the hospital just lends me to believe it's more serious than 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 even everybody's been led to believe. Ian, I mean, that's my two cents on that subject. Yeah, it's it's really and the details have been difficult to come by um, because none of us are doctors. It makes it. You know, what exactly is he dealing with? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I mean, I know what I'm being told, but mm -hmm. even still, there are things that prevent people from saying what's actually happening. So it's one of those where, you know, I want to, believe me, I want to know everything. Mm -hmm. but, and the Giants do, too. I think they obviously helped for a lot, to get a lot more out of yesterday than they, than they did. Mm -hmm. But that's just simply not reality. So we'll have to just wait, unfortunately. Thanks for calling in, Ian. We appreciate it. We'll chat soon, okay? Awesome. Thanks, Rich. Take That's Ian Rappaport of the NFL Media Group right there joining me here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.